Hello YouTube, it's Brendo ST, and today I'm going to show you how to use your laptop in Stellarium or I guess any other astronomy software to control your Ioptron mounts. Um, I have the Ioptron Smart EQ Pro, the 3200 model. Um, I can't say this process will work for every single one of them, but it will work for this one. So the first thing you need to get is either go on the Ioptron site and they have a cable that connects to the port in the back here of the controller um, to a I guess a serial port because um, my laptop and my computer do not have serial ports I ended up finding this on Amazon here uh, that's the information there I don't think I paid 20 bucks when I bought it the first time but um, this is it it's a USB to this cable connector now when I first got this thing I had couple little issues trying to get the computers to read the the controller um, I ended up finding a driver online which I have here on my laptop it is this oops this uh, driver here which I'll have download links in here for all this stuff um, which that is the, the FTD chip that's where I got the driver from so start with making sure that driver is installed. These are all the things you're going to need for installing or getting the uh, controller to work with uh, Stellarium, which is what I'm going to be using. I don't know how to do it for other programs, but this is what I need for Stellarium. So you need to pick up this, which is uh, ASCOM, probably not how it's pronounced, but that's how I'm pronouncing it. Uh, it's a show and make controller driver thing. You're going to need to pick up Ioptron's specific driver for the ASCOM, um, you get that right from I Ioptron's website, which again are in the double links, which I'll have in the description. All this stuff here. Um, you'll need Stellarium Scope. I don't know exactly what the program is. I think it's an add on for Stellarium to control a telescope. And uh, you need Stellarium itself. All these things are downloadable from all these links here. So let's start by making sure my driver is set up for my uh, cable here and then uh, we'll show the next step here. so a quick little note here because I forgot about this step when trying to install the uh, the cables drivers um, that folder um, that I downloaded from that website it doesn't actually have like an install folder in it so what you have to do this is for Windows 10 um, you have to right click on my computer or get to the device manager which is right there. There's another way to it by right clicking that. Um, it's in here somewhere. There it is. I, I do it the other way. Um, get there. Get on Device Manager. You will see this stuff pop up in here that it has this driver. It's unknown. We're going to go to Update Driver. We're going to browse. And we're going to specifically choose the folder on the desktop. Um, Where'd it go? I went too far. There it is. So click on that. I'm running an Intel, so i386. For me, you can click... Actually, let me just click on that whole folder and it might just find it by itself. So, that is how that works. You may need to restart your computer afterwards. And you might actually need to do it again with these things. So I'll update driver again just to make sure. Alright, so now it pops up. I don't know what this one is. Let me just try that again. Maybe. Okay, yeah, I don't know what that is. I'm not plugged in. But according to this, the port is now active, so I should be able to do the rest of the things here. I'm going to restart my laptop real quick though, just to 100% be sure. Alrighty, uh, I restarted my computer and in the process I ended up installing these three things right now. So uh, that's all done. So if you haven't done that, just make sure you install them in the order of ASCOM first, then the Ioptron driver, and then Stellarium Scope. What we're going to do first here is open Stellarium. And we have to just turn on basically tell telescope control so it uh, can 
control the telescope. Um, this driver is all set up, ready to go. Um, this you can plug into your controller. The back of the controller here. Oi. Am I doing it upside down? Yes, I am. My bad. So that's plugged in. Uh, I'll just turn this on. Uh, where my telescope is pointing right now, or my mount is pointing, is technically Polaris. It's that way. Um, but obviously, because we're indoors, we're not going to get a perfect view. So you're going to have to deal with that. <clears throat> Alright. So, with... And I'm sorry, I don't have screen capture on this laptop. Uh, I could have downloaded something, but you should be able to see it fine. With uh, this, we're going to go to the configuration window. I'm going to go to plugins. Also, I would make sure that um, with your Stellarium, make sure your time settings and your uh, location settings are set to exactly what your mount is set to. That way, they're in sync and you won't have any issues. So you're going to click on plugins. We're going to go down to telescope control and click on load at startup. And, uh,. Is there anything in the configure? No, there's not. Okay, so once that's there, you should see at the bottom now, there should be a telescope control button. Which is not, oh, I might have to restart it. Let me just make sure that's done. Okay. Alright. So telescope control. We're going to restart this real quick and it should pop up. Alright, with it open again, we should have, there it is. So now we have a telescope control button there. We're going to go click on it. And we're going to go configure telescopes. We've got to add a telescope. So we're going to be controlling externally software or remote computer. And we're going to... I'm just going to name this my mount's name. So smart EQ. Plus, yeah. uh, connect at startup. Let's click that, and then uh, this thing, this use field view. Basically, if you click on that and put a number there, you'll have a circle around. It's like an ocular thing. I'll just put like the number two is a small little. Uh, circle around where your telescope is going to be on the, it's like a display thing. So hit OK on that. Um, we're going to exit out of this right now. Exit out of that. I want to just go into settings real quick on the main menu and uh, save settings. I don't think you need to do that, but I'm doing it just to make sure. So we're going to close out of Stellarium. Next we got to open Stellarium scope. Uh, run. Oh, that's the installer. Cancel. Not bad. There it is. Alright. Okay. Yeah, I read the things. Blah, blah, blah. Don't show this message again. Okay. So, auto access. This is your thing. We're going to select the mount. I'm going to go to the drop down box and iOptron. Should be there after you've installed your your thing. And then we'll hit. Uh, da -da. That goes away. Okay, there we go. Um, And there we go. Now mine's automatically COM3. You can find that by clicking on the device manager and seeing that uh, when you plug your cable in, it will pop up. Um, if you have other cables plugged in, it could show more. But that's it. Or click on, on connect. So your telescope should be connected. Um, I'm going to hit Start Stellarium on here. Actually, I'm going to update Stellarium configuration. Hit yes, yes, yes. And hit Start Stellarium. 
Now, this should show. All right, let me just change the time here a little bit. We're gonna go fast forward to nighttime. Um, click on our telescope control. All right, so configure telescopes. You can see it is connected. So X out of that. We're gonna go to Polaris, which should be there. And you can see the scope is not exactly on it, but it should be. Um, but it's over there, and you can see a scope circle. So, say I wanted to click on something, say, we're gonna go for, let's just say, Pinwheel Galaxy. So you click on your object you wanna do, and the but I, I'm sure you can rekey bind these, but currently the button is Control One, and the mount now will automatically slew to that spot, and obviously you can't see because outside, but that will put you to where you need to go. As long as your mounts. Uh, location and time settings are the same as Stellarium's time and location settings. And that should be it. That's basically how you control your mount from your computer. That way you don't have to sit there and guess where you're going. Obviously it's a little easier for this one because it's a smart mount. So it has all the data in the controller to find these objects. But it's just nice to see a physical representation on... Uh, like astronomy software like this and being able to click where you want and then uh, slewing right to it. So if I go back to Polaris control one it should should have gone to zero position but it's not I think it's uh, a little off just because it's not um, I think the settings in here are saved from yesterday when I had it out and I had it in a different location, so it's not, it's thinking it's not lined right. But that's basically it. Um, yeah, that's how you set that up. Uh, very shortly here, I already ordered up, I have a guide camera coming for this thing, so I'll make a video on how to set that up and properly use it as soon as I figure it out myself. Um, but that's it, that's how you get your iOptron. Uh, mount to work with your uh, Stellarium software or any other, I'm assuming any other uh, astronomy software. The process is pretty straightforward. Well, thanks for watching guys. Uh, like, subscribe, or whatever you want to do. Um, I got more astronomy videos coming. I got more car videos coming uh, eventually. It's all stuff that we're doing in the quarantine right now, which is this current time. It's, what, April 9th, so, 2020. It's pretty hell right now here in New York, so I hope everyone's staying safe, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.